Traffic stop turned deadly this week for 31-year-old police officer Jonathan Diller. This as residents around the city are feeling increasingly unsafe. Joining me now to discuss the impact of this devastating shooting and overall public safety in the city is CBS law enforcement contributor and former deputy commissioner with the NYPD, Richard Esposito. Mr. Esposito, great to see you each week like we do. We thank you for your time. When you see something like this, an officer killed during a traffic stop, what does it say, I guess, uh, about safety for officers when it comes to something? I, I know you hear the term routine traffic stop over and over again. Can we put that to bed, that there is nothing routine about traffic stops? There is, Chris. That's one of the most important things um, for police officers to think about. There is no routine traffic stop. It's one of the more risky, more dangerous things that officers do. Um, you just don't know what you're going to encounter. And young officer uh, Jonathan Diller, a 31-year-old officer with a young child, um, he suffered the fatal consequences of what just what can happen on Monday. It was a very dark day in New York Monday. Association with the department, uh, I know just some for someone like myself, just on the outside looking at it, it just it boils my blood to see the blatant disregard uh, for authority for police officers with something like this. You know, these guys who are back out on the street who have gun violations in the recent past, the fact that they can perpetrate an act like this, this must drive you absolutely bonkers. It's, it's absolutely infuriating to see people who've committed crimes again and again back out on the street, Chris. Um, and it's infuriating to me uh, both as a, as a resident, someone who worked uh, in the police. It's just one of those things that you say, why can't we stop it and can we stop it? Well, that's the question. Like, like what politician's doorstep do people need to be on in order to get laws changed? I mean, the fact that you can actually be caught, arrested, with gun possess, I, I mean, I always think back to like the Plaxico Burris of the New York Giant thing years ago. The man had his own weapon discharged, shot himself, okay, and he does two years in prison, okay? I mean, now we're at a period where you can get caught with a gun last month and be out on the street three weeks later and then do something like this. So, you know, who needs to get the wake up call to be like, you know, this is no good. This is not working for anyone. It's not working for the citizens of this city and the tri state area who constantly fear that their lives are at stake when they just go out to a Broadway show or something like that or riding the subway. I mean, what can be done? I mean, that's, a, that's one of the things about our government that is remarkable. Albany, for starters, seems completely insulated from pressure from the citizens in New York. I mean, bail reform was passed without a lot of thought, without a lot of thought to the consequences of doing it poorly. And then you have a small section of people on the city council who just don't seem in touch with the realities of living in New York. You know, we have high expectations for safety in this city. We have a long way from the darkness of the 70s, but we also have long memories. Um, we don't want to go backward. Uh, I want to talk to you about subway violence, which is something we seem to talk about every week uh, because obviously it concerns so many people that are that are below ground on the subway system and use this as their their mode of transportation. Um, Operation Fair Play, and this is basically to get in the way of these fair evaders that are jumping turnstiles and whatnot. What are your thoughts on this, and, and can this really help the situation with subway crime in your estimation? You know, you can feel, Chris, the frustration of the mayor and the pressure um, but he has a tool now that he knows will work. He knows it from being a police officer. We know it from the past success. Stopping people from fair evading will turn up other, other consequences, people who have a warrant, people who have a weapon. It will help reduce crime, without a doubt. And last question for you real quick. You know, the mayor during his press conference on Monday said that overall crime is down 15.5 percent. Um, and that, uh, if you're a subway rider, you hear that number. That make you feel safer or, or no? It, it doesn't make you feel safer when the same time you hear that number, you hear two people were stabbed in Brooklyn on the subway. A police officer was punched in the face on the same platform where a man was pushed in front of a train. It's very hard for a number to bounce off against those narratives. It just doesn't really work. And, and that's, you know, that's, it's funny, that's the disconnect that, that seems to exist. You hear these statistics, overall crime being down, but then you foresee and read about stories like this happening. Uh, Richard, great to see you once again. Thank you again. Uh, and we will talk next week. Thank you, Chris. You got it.